Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Once David had settled into his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all the enemies surrounding him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But that very night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus the Lord speaks, Are you the man to build me a house to dwell in? I have never stayed in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until today, but have always led a wanderer's life in a tent. In all my journeying with the whole people of Israel, did I say to any one of the judges of Israel, whom I had appointed as shepherds of Israel to my people, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? This is what you must say to my servant David. The Lord of hosts says this, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be leader of my people Israel. I have been with you on all your expeditions. I have cut off all your enemies before you, I will give you fame as great as the fame of the greatest on the earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel. I will plant them there, and they shall dwell in that place and never be disturbed again, nor shall the wicked continue to oppress them as they did in the days when I appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give them rest from all their enemies. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will build you a house. And when your days are ended and you are laid to rest with your ancestors, I will preserve the offspring of your body after you and make his sovereignty secure. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne secure forever. I will be a father to him and he a son to me. If he does evil, I will punish him with the rod such as men use, with Strokes such as mankind gives. Yet I will not withdraw my favor from him as I withdrew it from your predecessor. Your house and your sovereignty will always stand secure before me and your throne be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited his people, he has come to their rescue, and he has raised up for us a power for salvation in the house of his servant David, even as he proclaimed by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient times, that he would save us from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. Thus he shows mercy to our ancestors. Thus he remembers his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant us, free from fear, to be delivered from the hands of our enemies, to serve him in holiness and virtue in his presence all our days. And you, little child, you shall be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him, 
to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. This by the tender mercy of our God, who from on high will bring the rising sun to visit us, to give light to those who live in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we ever needed a reminder that we are in the in-between time between the first coming of Jesus and the second, the reading that we heard from the second book of Samuel this morning, if we have ears to hear, will help us remember that clearly. The Lord had lived in tent and tabernacle. It was not time for him yet to live in the glory of the temple. Our Lord, Jesus Christ, came to us in the humility of stable and manger. It is not time for him yet to come again in power and glory and triumph to judge the world. Just as David was living in an in-between time and did not live to see the temple that his son Solomon would build, the grand structure for the glory of God, so it has not been our ancestors in faith, Christians before us, who have lived to see the second coming of Jesus. We have been satisfied thus far with manger and stable, and with the tragedy of the cross. The triumph of the resurrection, yes, but still short of the full glory of the coming of the Lord that is promised to us. We live in an in-between time. And as we are in a rush to celebrate Christmas this year and every year, as the outside world prompts us to do, even beginning as early this year as Halloween, it seemed like, we are still in Advent, my friends. We're still in the liturgical season of Advent, which ends today. But even more importantly, we are in the long season of Advent, this 2,000 or so year season of Advent, which for us seems like an eternity, but for God is but the blink of an eye. May we rest in comfort, knowing that God is pleased to dwell with us in the humility of manger and stable, just as God was pleased to dwell with David in the humility of tent and tabernacle. And may we prepare for us, may we prepare for the Lord, that glorious place when he comes once again. And when he does, may he find us ready to join in the celebration of his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I ask your prayer for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, for the standing committees of the dioceses of Eastern and Western Michigan, for the staff, vestry, and people of this parish, for Dan, our rector, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him especially our seminarian, Joseph Kennedy. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died.
I ask your own prayers and thanksgivings. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have the mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Good morning. Happy last day of Advent. It is good that we are together. What a blessing it has been to celebrate this season one with another as we have kept the Eucharist every day. As I prepare the altar for the Sacrament of Holy Communion, know that if you are worshiping with us online, you are invited and welcome to receive the sacrament spiritually this morning, as we who are here in person will receive it materially. Your desire to receive Jesus in the sacrament, your participation in this Eucharist, as we have participated here, is sufficient for you to receive the full benefit and grace of the sacrament. Even as we are kept apart by pandemic and quarantine, there is nothing that can separate us from the grace of God's love, especially as God wishes to be known in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread and this wine we offer, which you have just given in human hands, that they may become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with St. Joseph the worker for spouse, St. Paul the Apostle, St. John the Baptist, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're turning to page 364. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, with grace of peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Jesus, we believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. We love you above all things, and we long for you in our souls. Since during this pandemic, those at home cannot now receive you materially, please come spiritually into their hearts. As though you have already come, we embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Body of Christ, the bread of God. Continuing on page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the blessing, love, and mercy of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.